uh, we're back to, we've already talked about this previously, um, eigenvalue, eigenvectors. In particular, what we're going to be looking for in eigenvalue, eigenvectors is, and, well, it's eigenvalues. And then every eigenvalue has an eigenvector, which is really a span or a space that's associated with it. Um, Again, this came from a study of when there was an example previously in class. Uh, we did a Markov process, a Markov change. The idea of a Markov process was you started off with some sort of initial x0, and then from that particular point, this was your basis. And then from here on out, uh, x1 was equal to ax0, x2 was equal to ax1, etc. Sorry, x2, double bar all these since they're vectors. In other words, xn was a x sub n minus 1. Or if we wanted to look at this, we could say xn was equal to a to the nth x0. It formed a Markov chain. Which was our whole x0, x1, x2, etc. And so what, what I saw was multiplying by a caused this thing to move particularly over time. And the example that we had was that a particular A could have ones where there was vectors that when I multiplied it by A, there were directions such that when I took A times that particular direction, I would get a lambda times that particular direction. Let's call this, say, star. So there's particular directions that we noticed that um, when I multiplied it by A, and if I imagine A is a transform, really all this is saying that if A is a transform, that if A is n by n, then multiplying by A is a linear transform from Rn to Rn space. And so this was Rn, this is Rn, I'm multiplying by A. And in particular, we had a couple of directions, say one direction and the second direction, such that when I had a vector, say V1 in that direction, and say a vector here, say V2 in that direction, all it would do is take those and leave them in the same direction, but V1 would then be stretched by some sort of lambda 1 V1, and V2 could be, say, stretched, here it's shrunk a little bit, to a lambda 2 V2. Everybody else moved, but in these two directions for this particular problem is these directions or always anything on this direction will be stretched by the one would be lambda one associated with the v one direction, lambda two associated with the v two direction, and it ended up being that it probably would be more natural to make every vector to rather use v one v two as a basis. Because if I would use V1 and V2 as my basis and write everybody as linear combinations of those, it becomes linear combinations of 
the stretchings. So if I would have any vector x to say, hey, it's so many v2s and so many v1s, when I multiply by a, then this part of my vector gets stretched and this part of my vector gets stretched afterwards. And then I can figure out where it went to easily. And so it was more natural to put basis of the v1, v2 because it's just stretching directions. Everybody else is moving. But why do they move? Well, because I stretch sides. So if I multiply by a, if this was x, and it was a combination of v2 and v1, ax is going to do what? Well, if my v2 gets shorter, it just gets a little shorter, and v1 gets longer, it gets longer, my ax has now gone from here, so it went from, if this was my x, ax will just simply lift up. Why? Because one side gets longer, the other side gets shorter, it's going to move it in that direction. So it makes more sense to resolve everybody in terms of those bases. We could easily understand what's happening, what A actually does. So if these are better directions for a basis, they're better directions for understanding what the action of this multiplication is, uh, these particular things, obviously, when you look at it, are a span, right? It's not a, a direction represents a span, right? So it really kind of gets down to of how to find lambdas and x's belonging to the lambdas. The lambdas themselves are going to be called eigenvalues. The x's are going to be called eigenvectors. So that's our first problem. How do I go about doing this? Uh, some notation. If you find an actual lambda, say for example, you find that lambda was equal to 0 0.75 and you found that x equal to 1, 2 belongs to lambda equals 0 0.75, right? So you had an example, and you would say, I have found eigenvalue 0 0.75 and eigenvector 1, 2 that belongs to 0 0.75. That's one way that you can say it. Another way that you can say it is you found, so that's one way to say it. Another way to say it would be to say, my eigenvalue is lambda equals 0 0.75 with eigenspace, which is simply alpha times 1, 2. Because really what we're talking about is the fact that if lambda is equal to 0 0.75, that's the stretching component, but it's in a direction. And so it, what's the entire direction? It's the eigen vector that you found, right, and stretched by something. On the other hand, other people could write it this way. All of a sudden they have, I have eigen value lambda equals 0 0.75, and you would say things like with eigen vector equal to, say, eigen vector x equal to well, for 1, 2, what's its length? Square root 5. And so somebody else says, I'm going to pick 1 over radical 5, 2 over radical 5. And so what did they do to their eigenvector? They made it a unit vector. They just chose to do it that way. All right. A lot of times people, and if you look at the back of the book, you'll solve your problem and you'll get an eigenvector, and you look at the back and it's like, well, that's not the eigenvector I got. You know, you will find things like you found two thirds and one sixth. And they don't write that, they write one four. 
What's the difference between the two? You found two thirds and one sixth, and they wrote in the answer in the back of the book four one. They just multiplied it by a constant. They multiplied it by six because they just wanted integers. <laughs> Why could you do that? Because you can pick anything in that particular direction you want. You can pick a unit vector. You can multiply it by a constant until it's all ints. They're negatives. I don't want negatives. I want positives. So multiply it by negative one, and everything's positive. It doesn't matter. The important part is that you are allowed what? To pick any alpha. It's better to just simply say alpha and say it's a space. The uh, way I usually like to write these is rather this. Eigenvalue is lambda equals 0 0.75 with eigenspace being the span of a basis vector. It kind of helps when you say it's just a span. So it's one dimensional. This will help, help when you have a particular eigenvalue that has many eigenvectors. So instead of writing it alpha one eigenvector plus beta another eigenvector, you just say it's the span. So if it's basis two, that means the eigenspace is two dimensional. Right. The thing that's being stretched does not have to be a line. Right? The stretching constant, the eigenvalue, is unique. It's a scalar. But what it's associated with can be a line, can be a plane, can be a three-dimensional object, can be a four-dimensional. It's how many eigenvectors are associated with this. If you find many, then it's a space. That's why we use, we use the word the space. So a lot of times it's easier to just jump to the word space and say span. That gets rid of the whole, a lot of times people look at this and they imagine eigenvectors are unique. They are not. Because this is a space, not a vector. We need a direction to define it. If I have two eigenvectors, then we have a two-dimensional eigenspace. That entire plane is shrunk according or grown according to its particular lambda that it belongs to. All right, how do I find them, though? So that's our notation. Um, finding it really is, if you say find, it really says I need to solve a times x equals lambda x for lambda. Hmm. And a lambda will have an x associated with it? And the answer is yes. And it's like, okay. Uh, don't know how to solve that. Uh, hey, why don't we just move everything to one side and see if that helps. Solving that would obviously be the same thing as solving ax equal, sorry, minus lambda x is equal to, if I move this across, what's left on the right? The zero vector. So if I move it across, it's going to be the zero vector. Okay. Um, on the left-hand side, what do both of those have? Yes. An x, but can I factor it out? Yeah. No, no, because... Because a is a matrix, a matrix and this scalar. is scalar. Yeah. Those are two different types of multiplication. But will I change anything? Is x, because x is the same thing as ix, right? That means that I could have this could actually be written as ax is minus lambda ix equals the zero object. Just replace x with ix. But now if I look at that, is that a matrix? Yes, it's just the identity with what on the diagonal? Lambdas. And so now this is a matrix times x, matrix times x. Now can I factor out the x? Yes. And so now I have that this is a minus lambda i x equals zero. So solve the top is really slow. <laughs> solve the bottom. Does that look familiar? If A is a matrix, lambda I is a matrix, matrix minus matrix, what is that thing? 
It's a matrix. If I wrote a matrix times x equals 0, what do we normally call that? That's a homogeneous system of equations. So what have I run into? I've run into a homogeneous system. Boy, I know an awful lot about homogeneous systems. Now, when I look at this, I'm, ch I'm saying solve. What do I mean by solve? That means that there have to be lambda x combinations that make this zero. Now, uh, there's an obvious x that makes this zero. What would it be? Zero. The zero object. That's called the trivial solution. What I'm interested in is lambdas and x's that are not all zero that make this zero, right? And so what I want is there are lambda x's that make this zero. And importantly, it's like note, obviously I want my x's to not be the zero object. So what am I actually looking for? Non-trivial solutions. So my problem has become find all non-trivial solutions to this problem. So solving x lambda means find all non-trivial solutions to a minus lambda i, which is a matrix, times x equals zero object. Okay. I can actually put this all into five statements. So, one. Lambda is an eigenvalue of A. What did that mean? That means that A minus I, lambda I, X equals zero, has non-trivial solutions, right? If you have an eigenvalue, that means that this thing will have a non-trivial solution. Well, who collects all the non-trivial solutions, right? What am I looking for? What I'm, if this is a matrix, a matrix times x is equal to 0. That would mean all the non-trivial solutions are normally collected into what space? The null space. So what we're saying is the null space of this matrix, whatever it is, is not just the 0 object. We have a non-trivial solution. So the null, the null space actually has some other things, and we collect them all together. In other words, this will be a space. So the null space is our space that I'm looking for. Um, for what does it mean about your matrix if you have only the trivial solutions? That is well, it's consistent. We're only, we know it's consistent because it always has a zero, right, for the entire thing. But the matrix itself is invertible, which means we call it non-singular, right? If it has only the trivial solution, it's non-singular and invertible. But we have non-trivial solutions. So that tells us that the matrix A minus lambda I is singular which means non-invertible, which finally tells us something that we can actually get to a doing thing. How do you test for singularity on a square matrix? What's the easiest way to do this? The determinant. And so the determinant of this matrix must spit out what? Zero. Zero. Have an eigenvalue. It means this, it means this, it means this. It means the determinant of the matrix A minus lambda I has to be zero. And so what we've actually done to this is if you want to find lambda, 
our eigenvalues, you find all lambda such that the determinant of a minus lambda i is 0. Now, once you find a lambda, this here, that is your eigenspace, right? Because I want to find all x's associated with this particular thing, which is, so step one on finding lambda, that's the first thing we do, is we calculate the determinant, set it equal to zero, find all those lambda. And the next thing we have to do is, for each lambda i, how do we find x belonging to lambda i? You go ahead and plug it back in, you set it equal to zero, and then solve. In other words, the null space is actually the eigenspace. What we do is we just simply plug lambda i into a minus lambda i i, set it equal to zero, and then you then solve a minus lambda i i x equals zero. And the way you normally do this is an augmented matrix. What you do is you just simply go, this is a minus lambda i i, augment it with zero, zero object, and then we solve it. Really what we're looking for is the null space of A minus lambda I I. That's what you're going to find. And you write it as a span. So everything we've done before is actually a tool to go through and solve this particular problem. All right. Um, so example, let's say I have one, two, one, zero, three, one, zero, five, minus one, and that's my A. I want to find eigenvalue, eigen vector problem. So step one is the lambdas. The lambdas are, I need to solve the determinant of A minus Lambda i equals zero. All right, a minus what is lambda i? So because lambda i is just simply lambda zero 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 lambda zero 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 lambda, right? Lambda i is just lambdas on the diagonals. A minus that is really doing what? Just slept, just, it takes away lambdas from the diagonals. That's all that's happening. So that tells us that we need to calculate what's the determinant of 1 minus lambda, 2, 1, 0, 3 minus lambda, 1, 0, 5, negative 1 minus lambda, determinant equals 0. Solve that. Now, when you calculate this determinant, if you look at this left-hand side, this is we are supposed to solve for lambda. All right, um, calculating the determinant, this would be easiest to do as a cofactor expansion, right? Which would be it, just take the guy who has the most amount of zeros, so I'll take the left column. So what is this? This is going to be 1 minus lambda times the determinant of 3 minus lambda 1, 5 negative 1 minus lambda has to be equal to 0, right? Minus 0 plus 0 is what the, the rest of it is. I didn't write that. What's the determinant of a 2 by 2? A, a times D minus 
It's cross multiplication subtraction, right? So this would be 1 minus lambda all times this multiplication. I will have 3 minus lambda times negative 1 minus lambda minus this subtraction. 5 needs to be equal to 0. Um, I suppose the easiest way to do all of this if you want to make your life a little bit different is I could factor the negatives out of that and take the negative out of that, take it all the way out, which would flip those two order. It really doesn't, however you want to do this. Say lambda minus 1, all times 3 minus lambda times 1 plus lambda plus 5 equals 0. I just took a negative out of this to here, took that negative and that negative out, which flipped the order there. I'm just trying to make it a little bit. So lambda 1, what's this? It's 3 plus 2 lambda minus lambda squared plus 5 is 8 equals 0, right? Does that look reasonable? Which is actually lambda minus 1, and I'll take a negative 1 out to make, usually this looks better, lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 8 equals 0. What well, factors of 8 are 2 apart? Four and two, so what do I have got? And so, what are the reason? And then, what happens here is this will always happen. The determinant will become a polynomial equal to zero. And so, this polynomial on the left hand side, this is fully factored, but the left hand side here, once we get this, this entire thing is called the characteristic equation. And the left of the equation is called the characteristic polynomial. When you take the determinant, you're always going to get a polynomial, is what's going to happen. And so the characteristic equations, and then from here, I get uh, lambda 1 is 1, lambda 2 is 4, and lambda 3 is minus 2. So now I have my eigenvalues. But every value, these are just the stretching numbers, right? And so every one of these values is going to have a, a space associated with it. What's the space that I'm going to do? That means for every single one of these now, I've got to go back and say, now we have to find the eigenspaces. So you're going to find all the lambdas at once. Uh, can you start to see why? Uh, as we start to do, say, 2 by 2 is not bad, right? It's always going to be a quadratic eigenvalue system. Uh, 3 by 3 will have three eigenvalues. It might be multiplicity. We could have complex solutions. <laughs> but 4 by 4, fourth degree polynomials have formulas, but after that, there are none, right? It's going to be difficult to say, what's a fifth degree polynomial, sixth degree polynomial, set it equal to 0, find all the roots. That's what we're looking for, is the roots of these polynomials. So you're going to have to be able to bring to bear algebra of solving polynomials. You need to know determinants. And determinants in a non-trivial way, you can't just throw this in because you're going to have to plug in these minus lambdas, do all of this nice little work to be able to get it out. All right, eigenspaces have to occur for each lambda i. So every one of these lambda i's, I'm going to have to go back and go and say, all right, um, the first one I have to worry about is lambda 1 is equal to 1. If lambda 1 equals 1, a minus 1 times i is what? That's just a minus 1 on each of those diagonal elements, right? So that is, what was our a? That. Take 1 away from that. I'll cheat. So copy, paste. That becomes... 0, 2, minus 2. And then what I need to do is I now have to find all such x's. So what I'm going to do is I want all x's such that this a minus 1i x 
equals zero. So how do I do that? I take my a minus one i, zero, two, one, zero, two, one, zero, five, negative two, augmented with zero, 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 and solve it. Just use augmented matrices. All right, um, well, as a zero, there's nothing I can do about it. All right, I'm gonna, uh, two, one, one, so this is pretty obvious that this will be all zeros. And then that's all zeros, I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the bottom, because all zeros need to be at the bottom. And so this would be 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 5, negative 2, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's do it that way. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, uh, how do I solve that? All right, I need to make one of these a 0, right? Um, I could take half of that if I want to, and then might as well do that and get 0, 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 5, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now how do I make the 5 into a 0? Negative 5 of those, that's a 0. What's negative 5 of those? Negative 5 halves. What's a negative 2, which is negative 4 halves, and negative 5 halves is negative and 0. And anyway, I can just change that 9 halves to a 1. And now this is one, 0, 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then I can just make that 1 half into a 0, and I get that. Anyone want to read that off for me? Remember, this is what? I'm looking for all x's, right? What are x's? x1, x2, x3, right? What's x1? Zero. First off, who's my lead? Lead, lead. Who's free? X1. So what's x1? Anything, right? x1 is free, so it's alpha. Looking at this, what's x2 obviously? It's zero. What's x3? So what are all x's? Alpha, zero, zero. Which is the same thing as taking that alpha out, and we get that. So lambda equals one has eigenspace of the span in the direction of 1, 0, 0. And normally we would say the eigenvector, if we would say the word eigenvector, what's the eigenvector? Anything in that direction. I could depict negative 1, 0, 0, 0. I could pick 2, 0, 0, 0. <laughs> However you want. I like spaces because it makes it easier. Especially when you start to find that if you have lambda and it actually has the null space has two free variables and all of a sudden you're like oh it's two dimensional and so you have the span because you're looking for the null space it always ends up that the null space is your eigenspace and the basis of your space are the vectors associated and we would have to continue what would we do we would do same for lambda 2 lambda 3 Everybody okay with that? Can you see how this requires an awful lot? This is where a lot of people is like that arithmetic in the past of like augmented matrices, make the solution, calculating determinants, doing all that work. It's I'm not, I'm not even done. How long am how far am I into this? Right. I started right there and I'm going on to two pages and I'm not even done. So in other words, this whole thing, this is actually, I noticed that this is a struggle for a, lo a little bit of times, like solving these things, especially for the, the homogeneous one where you have free variables, always causes a little bit of an issue. People like multiplying by this and this and this. You have to kind of get comfortable with these sorts of problems. So 
I'd actually finish that one off and do all of them and see how comfortable you are. Now, um, what are some things that can happen? What are some properties that we could actually bring to bear? Um, the first property, because we're going to have some sort of the characteristic equation is this characteristic polynomial equal to zero. And normally the characteristic polynomial, since it's a polynomial, we just say P of lambda. We have this P of lambda equals zero, right? Then what I know is if the degree of this polynomial is, say, n, which is going to be, this is an n by n matrix, uh, that tells us that how many lambdas are there going to be? We will have lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n. But, right, but these n solutions, this is the fundamental theorem of college algebra. The fundamental theorem of college algebra says if the degree is 10, how, and you set it equal to zero for this polynomial, how many roots are there? How many solutions are there? 10. But are these roots unique? No. If they occur, for example, if I would do something like uh, I take my polynomial and it ends up being that I have lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 2 times lambda plus 3 and then lambda minus 4 equals 0. This was a fourth degree polynomial, which means it had to have come from a what? A 4 by 4 matrix, right? And did a 4 by 4 matrix, did all of my work on my determinant, it ended up being this. I find out that lambda 1 is what? 2. What's lambda 2? Two? 2. What's lambda 3? Negative 3. What's lambda 4? Four? 4. So when I plug this guy back in, I'm only going to plug in the 2 once, right? But that's going to tell you that the space, when you find the null space, what dimension is it most likely going to be? It's probably going to be two-dimensional, right? When you find the null space, you'll have two free variables as you go through that problem. You find the null space is going to be two-dimensional, so this eigenspace is two-dimensional. Is normally what you're going to see. Not that that's kind of normal, but for you're going to have n, so I can have multiplicity. That's possible. What's the other thing that occurs? Well, what if your polynomial? If I'm, this thing is actually trying to find roots. What if your polynomial never crosses the x-axis? It's going to be complex. I have n roots not across the real numbers, but across the complex numbers. And so what else would happen is I could actually have, say, lambda plus a 3 minus i. But if this is going to be real valued polynomials, if I have 3 minus i, what must I also have? When you solve these things, roots always, complex roots always occur in complex conjugates. In other words, if you have 3 minus i, you're going to have to have what else? 3 plus i. In other words, multiplicity can occur when you solve it, complex numbers occur. But more importantly, um, if, say, lambda i was equal to a plus b i, is an eigenvalue with z being its eigenvector. And now, the eigenvector, this is kind of interesting. <laughs> The eigenvector itself can have components that are also complex. All right, what is that telling us? That tells us this, well, wait, wait a second. You told me like a two-dimensional, like here, this would have been a two-by-two two matrix. 
And the two by two matrix could have complex conjugate eigenvalues, which would have complex eigendirections, eigenvectors, right? But R2, going to R2, there are no complex numbers, right? Because it's a real number by real number. In other words, what's really going on here is, yeah, you have R2, but R2 is actually embedded inside of, of complex number times complex number space. A real number line, right, is actually stuffed inside the complex plane. And if I take a real number line and a real number line, I have two complex planes crossing each other at 90 degrees, which I cannot visualize. This is actually a fourth dimensional space. And then what's happening? When I multiply by A, it's taking this entire complex, complex space and transforming it, but in these complex vector directions, it's stretching. So physically what's happening is if you get complex values with complex vectors, you imagine that your real space is no longer real number, real number space. We're talking complex number, complex number, complex CN space, which we can't even visualize. And then this thing's doing rotations and within these, all these complex numbers. And complex numbers have some very nice properties that allow us to do things like this. But... Um, that's what you could imagine is happening. You're talking about Rn is embedded, and so we're lifting it out into a complex space. But if this is true, then lambda complex conjugate, A minus Bi, is an eigenvalue as well. In other words, if you find one complex eigenvalue, you have another one that immediately occurs which is its complex conjugate. And you don't have to worry about finding its complex eigenvector. It will have the complex conjugate of every single thing being its eigenvector. In other words, the first part that happens is if you get complex solutions, you get two groups for one. So, for example, if you said that uh, lambda 1 was 1 plus 2i and with eigenvector um, x equal to 1 plus i i, so what you did is you found 1 plus 2i, you plugged the you subtracted 1 plus 2i from every diagonal element. You set the null system up. You found the null space, which is the eigenspace. You found one degree of freedom, and it ended up being that as your vector. You do not have to do the next. Immediately, you can actually write the next one. Lambda 2 must be what? Uh, 1 minus 2i with x being, what's the complex conjugate at the top? 1 minus i. What's the complex conjugate at the bottom? Negative i. Now, again, I can multiply by anything I want. <laughs> what would happen, I mean, one of the things that you'll notice here at times, and so, okay, we, we're done. We could actually write that. Here's a little note. This will happen on your homework, and this will happen as you, mainly, as you look at your work to the back of the book. You will say things like, oh, lambda 2 is equal to 1 minus 2i, and the vector I found was this 1 minus i minus i. And then the next person says, yeah, lambda 2, I found lambda 2 is equal to 1 minus 2i, and I went ahead and plugged it in. I forgot the whole complex conjugate thing, so I plugged it back in, and I solved for my null space. And when I solve for my null space, I found this. And you look at yours, and you look at theirs, and you're like, what in the heck? Well, here's the deal. What would happen if I would t multiply 1 minus i over minus i by i? What would that become? 
i minus i squared divided by minus i squared. What's i squared? One. Negative 1. Yeah. What's negative i squared? 1. And so what is this? That's i plus 1, which is 1 plus i over 1. In other words, what did you find? The same thing. They're in the same direction. It's a span. What's a scalar? Any number. But what happens when your numbers become complex? <laughs> you can put anything you want into this. In other words, you'll look at the back of the book. They'll show you this. And you come up with your work. And you come up with that. And you don't recognize, well, wait a second. I actually found the same thing. And so you have to be careful. right? You re don't throw away your work. right? Trust yourself. If, you're, if your algebra is right, you're right. And if they get something else, and they did their algebra right, they're right. Now, what's the difference? So what's nice about the complex conjugates, you can do half the problem. I like to do ones like this on the exam. And I tell you things like this, and I prepare you for things like this, because it, what does it mean? You solve half the problem, and then write down the rest of the problem. It's like, oh, you just solve one. It'd be like this. Way back up here, and I stopped do same. If I'd have done one and I, it was a complex number and you solved it, you've actually solved two. I don't have two more to do, I just have one more to do. So it's one of the ways to kind of shorten problems. The problem is if you don't remember that I told you I'm going to do this and you go through all that effort, you just spend an extra five, ten minutes of algebra that was absolutely unnecessary. Um, another one. A second thing, an, another property. Second one. Uh, if A is triangular, if I say the word triangular, I mean it can be upper triangular, lower triangular, but if it's both upper and lower, it's what? It's diagonal. If A is triangular, say for example, 2, negative 1, 3, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, right? If that's A, if I subtract, I want to calculate the determinant of 2 minus lambda, negative 1, 3, 0, 4, 0, 0, whoops, sorry, 4 minus lambda, 0, 0, minus 1, minus lambda, right? It's supposed to be equal to 0. What is the determinant of triangular matrices? It's the multiplication of the diagonal. In other words, what do I have? 2 minus lambda, 4 minus lambda, negative 1 minus lambda is 0. But what's lambda now? 2, 4, negative 1. Notice something? If A is triangular, I will also take advantage of this on the test. <laughs> if A is triangular, then the lambda I are what? The diagonal. diagonal elements. Right? Nothing to do. Right, I'm telling you this right now, and this will be used on the test. Why? Because I can jump straight <laughs> to, there's nothing for you to solve. There, what about, what's the polynomial characteristic? I've had people take that thing and do this big, giant, long determinant thing, and I'm like, that was just 10 minutes worth of work. You know? It's like, the answer is the diagonal elements, right? I'm telling you this now. This will be on the test. And why do I do it? Sometimes I'm interested in whether or not you can solve a polynomial equal to zero. Sometimes I'm interested in, you have an eigenvalue. Now what? Right? Take advantage of the fact that you know the eigenvalues. Now do a problem. Find the spaces associated with the values. It shortens the problem, and I can test immediately on the spaces. Is everybody okay with that? Um, a third property. The determinant of A is always equal to lambda 1, lambda 2 times lambda n. Always. The determinant of the matrix is the same as the product of the lambdas. This is a quick check. 
if you wanted to, not a quick check, but it's a check. Let's go back to this one problem up here where I found my lambda i's, right? I found 1, 4, negative 2. What's that product? That's negative 8. What's the determinant of that? It'd be 1 times the determinant of that lower part, which is negative 3 times negative 5 is negative 8. So you could say, yes, that gives me good intuition that this will actually happen. Another thing that you can actually use on this is, so the determinant is always the product. You also have that what's called the trace of A is simply A11 plus A22 plus everything up to ANN. The trace is just simply take A, don't do anything to it. Just add the diagonal elements. It ends up being that adding the diagonal elements is the same as adding the eigenvalues. So that doesn't even, that doesn't even require the determinant. <laughs> you could actually use this to say, did I find the right numbers? So we can go back. All right, I did all that work. You know, did I make a mistake? Well, what's 1 plus 4 minus 2? What's 1 plus 3 minus 1? 3. I'm pretty sure that I didn't make a mistake because if those would add the same number wrongly, that's always possible. <laughs> but it's pretty rare for that. I mean, not rare, but it most likely wouldn't happen, right? I shouldn't use words like rare and it's when I don't know the actual statistics. But we do that all the time, right? 60% of statistics are made up on the spot. There's two I mean, there's things where I ran into that. Even people who write papers, like actually that's like read the front of this book. It says like 75% of all, you know, like when I said 60% of stats is made up on the spot, like on the very first page, well over 75% of all math are oh, really? He went out there and actually found all mathematical problems encountered in scientific and industrial applications involving involve solving a linear system at some stage. He actually did the statistics to verify that it was over 75%. It's like, no, I just made it up. <laughs> right? It's, uh, a lot. What do you mean by a lot? More than 75%. More than 75%. <laughs> really? All right. So the trace is what you can also use to do that. Uh, here's a little kind of cheaty thing. If it's a two-by-two two matrix, you should be able to find the determinant really easy, right? But if it was two-by-two, two, that means you only need lambda one, lambda two, that would mean that the determinant is easy, the trace is easy. Really what you could do is solve just lambda 1 times lambda 2 equals the determinant, and lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is equal to the trace. I know those two numbers easily, so then I could just solve that for lambda 1, lambda 2. But that doesn't work for the higher. <laughs> but don't worry about that. But these are usually used for quick checks. Um, next time, uh, 6, 2, and 6, 3 are, well, 1. Now that everybody here can calculate eigenvalues with their corresponding eigenvector space span thing, right? We're going to do applications. But that involves you going home today or staying here at school and making sure that you can find eigenvalues with their corresponding vectors which is, again, the number one trip up on most of this stuff is the sheer amount of matrix arithmetic, college algebra. This, these are pages and pages of arithmetic work, and you need to make sure that you can do this reasonably quick. All right, that's it.